the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Tonight on DC News Now at 6, delays on Metro after a person was struck on the tracks. What we're learning about the investigation. Plus, one-on-one -on -one with D.C. Police Chief Robert Conti III, his response to the latest crime statistics. And D.C.'s newest music venue draws in more than 500,000 tickets requested for opening shows, but only a fraction of those who applied hit the lottery. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for D.C. News Now at 6. I'm Annalisa Gale. We've had a few rain delays in the district, including at Nats Park. Let's kick things off now with meteorologist Scott Sumner. Yeah, we've had some active weather out there this afternoon, Annalisa, but things are quieting down just a little bit. But I want to do a little radar tour. First off, we'll start off to the west along Highway 7 here by Percival, having a little bit of a light shower. There is Charlestown and Brunswick and Lovettsville, just to put that into perspective where you are. So you're out towards uh, West Virginia and the northern portions of Virginia. We move down towards southern Maryland. You still have some heavy rain here and some thunder and lightning across uh, Highway 5 and 230. Again, south of La Plata, south and east of La Plata, that's moving away from you. Uh, up to the north of that line of storms, we're dry, but in D.C. as well as portions of Anne Arundel County, there's still a flood warning for some heavier earlier rains which have yet receded in some of the small streams and creeks. There you see, where's most of the active weather? It is south and east of D.C. and our future cast has most of that continuing out towards the Chesapeake over the next hour, so we will see some improving conditions. More details coming up in the weather in just a bit. All right, thanks, Scott. Now to your top headlines. A man was hit and killed by a metro train in Arlington this morning. It happened around 1030 on the tracks of the Pentagon City Station. Metropolitan Transit Police said station cameras showed a man going onto those tracks and walking into the tunnel shortly after service. After service at Pentagon City was suspended and shuttle bus services were requested. WMATA is investigating. And in Maryland, Bowie State University police are now investigating reports of shots fired on the campus early Saturday morning. They say it happened in the parking lot behind the James Proctor building. There are no confirmed reports of students being injured as a result of that incident and no arrests have been made. University officials say there's no threat to the campus, but students are being asked to avoid that area under investigation. And in the district, police are looking for two suspects in connection to a deadly shooting this morning in the Brentwood neighborhood. Police found the man with gunshot wounds around 11 a.m. at 13th Street and W Street Northeast. That's near a Home Depot and giant grocery store. Nearly a dozen shots were fired based on markers on the scene. The victim has not been identified. And now to a story you'll see only on DC News Now. DC Police Chief Robert Conti is discussing his efforts to reduce crime in the district. The chief has been under fire and facing some heavy criticism, but as our Leonard N. Fleming tells us, he's remaining optimistic. Robert Conti is a homegrown chief. He hails from DC and has his dream job to lead the department he rose through in the ranks. But it is a job with serious crime challenges as he approaches two years in charge after city council confirmed him in May of 2021. We're still in the fight. Uh, you know, we, DC is a resilient city. I'm a resilient chief. I'm from this city. Uh, the communities here are resilient. To say Robert Connie loves DC is an understatement, but the district's top cop has his hands full. Homicides are up 31%, sex abuse 55%, down from over 100% two weeks ago, and auto thefts up 108%. When we talk about violent crime bring, being up about 2%, you know, really at this point in the year, you know, four months into the year, it's really kind of, it's kind of hard to gauge what that's going to look like by the end of the year. Crime spice now, the chief says may not continue to climb. Last year we started out with an uptick and during the summer months when crime generally goes up here in Washington DC we saw some some very low lows and we ended up with a 7% reduction in crime, a 10% reduction in a uh, 7% reduction in violent crime, a 10% reduction in homicides and 4% overall reduction in crime. And what does the chief need to fight crime? It's no one thing, right? It's not oh if you just hire more police officers, oh if you just add more prosecutors, oh if you just change this legislation legislation. It's all of those things because it's all of those things that contribute to where we are currently. You know, this has been a slow drip that has happened over time. One major challenge, keeping bad people in jail. Is there a problem with keeping bad guys? There is a problem with keeping bad guys in jail. We have a system
system right now that really is in favor of allowing people to be released for committing violent crimes in some instances are pending their trial. I think if you put a gun in a person's face, if you shoot somebody, if you rob somebody and you do anything that's involved in a violent crime, that burden to prove that you belong in community should be on you and not on the government to have to prove that. I asked the chief about comments he made two years ago about seizing fewer firearms and more about arresting people who have guns. Those are the right guns. The wrong hands are these people who commit violent crimes who continuously show up on report after report. The average homicide victim, average homicide suspect in the District of Columbia arrested 11 times. 11 times prior to them committing a homicide or becoming a homicide victim, right? So that is something telling. And I want to make sure that we stay focused on that. We walked a neighborhood in Southeast DC on Alabama Avenue, one of many wrought with violence. Here, violent crime is up 30% and six people have been murdered in the past two years. One of your officers told me uh, recently that this is a war zone, just in this area alone. Do you hear those types of statements about your city, your area here, um, a neighborhood like this where residents feel sometimes defeated. How does that make you feel? Well, obviously it doesn't make me feel good. But it really just makes me more determined. Uh, it tells me that we got a lot of work to do uh, in this particular community. Uh, while this is the story of this community, you know, the dynamic thing about Washington, D.C., you can drive two blocks and people have a different experience. Uh, so we have to focus in. Conti says the job weighs on him, but it doesn't stop him from going to nearly every crime scene. Has it been worth it to be in this job? Oh, absolutely. It absolutely has been worth it. I mean, I feel like I got the best job in the city. Yes, I get to see the worst of uh, the worst of the worst. I, yeah, that's part of it but also get to encounter grandmothers and, and little kids. I get to do some amazing things to give back to my city every single day. Again, that was Leonard and Fleming there. He'll have much more on this coming up this week. Well, earlier today, people gathered on Pennsylvania Avenue for the annual Emancipation, Emancipation Day Parade, which recognizes the date when slavery was abolished in the District of Columbia. The event was slightly hindered by rain, for example. The main concert was also delayed, but DC News Now's contributor Jimmy Alexander made it out before the bad weather rolled in. He spoke to people who were taking it all in. Oh, it's such a beautiful celebration. Just, you know, so glad to, you know, see DC still standing here today and commemorating such an important occasion in our city's history. All the music, the costumes, like the diversity, people from all over the world. And our Jimmy Alexander will have the full story later tonight on DC News Now at 10, 9 and 10. Well, DC's newest music venue is drawing some big interest, but only the lucky ones will actually get a peek inside anytime soon. The Atlantis, which pays homage to the iconic original 930 club, is kicking off its May opening with a lottery system to score tickets. DC News Now's Marielle Carbone takes us to the construction site. As workers focused in on the construction here at the up and coming Atlantis, music fanatics were focusing in on their phones. I was checking my email on a daily basis, hoping that I'll get Foo Fighters tickets, that I'll get Bare Naked Ladies tickets. Will Schoenenberger says he entered the venue's ticket lottery for seven of its 44 inaugural shows. And I didn't get any of them. How are you feeling not getting any of those tickets? I'm, I'm sad. I'm very sad and I'm going to have a cocktail. That's what I'm going to do. He isn't alone. According to the venue, 520,000 tickets were requested for the shows, which include names like Foo Fighters, Third Eye Blind, and Darius Rucker. Less than 20,000 tickets will be distributed, meaning only about 4% of those requests were granted. The venue announced who got what on a rolling basis this week. Like, apparently there's like a thousands of entries for it. Rahul Karaj says he doesn't know anyone who scored a ticket. Two or three people that I know of that I know were interested in a couple of these concerts, so they didn't really get tickets. Well, the chances of me like getting this one ticket slim to none. The great Ramos sort of, like, was wrong. Like, I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. He scored two tickets to Third Eye Blind. It's cool, but I'm not, I don't want to gloat or anything, but you know, I just, I was just, I'm just really looking forward to seeing Third Eye Blind at the end of the day. <laughs> tickets are just $44, marking 44 years of the 930 Club. They can't be resold, but can be exchanged at face value through Ticketmaster. I think it is a great way to make the new club popular and to, it's a great marketing concept and it's a good way to open up the club. 
All right, again, that was Marielle Carbone there. Well, the U.S. Treasury's top leader is promising Ukraine significant support in the coming months for its defense against Russia. Secretary Janet Yellen made the pledge for additional economic security and humanitarian assistance while hosting the Ukrainian Prime Minister in D.C. Jesse Turner reports. To support Ukraine in every way we can. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said Thursday time has only strengthened U.S. support for Ukraine's struggle against Russia. And she promised more help is on the way. As President Zelensky said, this support is not charity. It's an investment in democracy and global security. Since the war began 14 months ago, the U.S. has provided Ukraine with more than $100 billion in military and civilian support. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shimihal stressed his country is committed to preventing any misuse of those funds. Ukraine implemented exceptional measures of control to monitor the use of American assistance. On the global stage, Ukraine and the International Monetary Fund agreed last month on a nearly $16 billion loan package to help the country rebuild. This commitment is a significant step toward putting Ukraine on a sound economic path. Yellen and Shimihal also applauded new sanctions against Russia. But all of the support coincides with potential security complications between Ukraine and the U.S. after a massive leak of classified documents appeared to disclose some of the country's upcoming military plans. We need to ensure that these leaks in no way undermine that counteroffensive. Massachusetts Congressman Jake Auchincloss and his colleagues will get a classified briefing on the leak when they return from recess next week. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor.